What were you thinking yesterday watching this for a, a campaign that we were told was going to be more disciplined, more efficient? They were measuring the drapes in Milwaukee. What are we doing now? That's right. I mean, we saw some early uh, indication that it was going to be very difficult for Trump to to remain as disciplined and on message, even in Milwaukee. If you recall his acceptance speech was a little bit long, a little bit rambling, but more important, <laughs> it lost the train of the message, right? It was, hmm. uh, it, he went in and out of his sort of traditional grievance, his frustrations about what happened in 2020, that the election was stolen, that Nancy Pelosi is crazy, all of that. But it didn't really matter as much because the focus was on Biden and Biden was mm. his age and his performance at the debate was everything. Um, now that Biden's no longer in the picture, the, the focus goes back to Donald Trump, or at least Donald Trump wants to be the focus once again. I think he's frustrated mm -hmm. that media attention is going to not just uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls and you know the fact that they're a brand new ticket, but taking the rallies live, showing these long lines of people waiting to get into the rallies. So uh, I remember um, when Harris was, um, I guess, uh, picked, uh, shall we say, uh, you know, when the president endorsed her right after he uh, announced he wasn't running again. And a number mm -hmm. of Democrats said to me, you know, the, the one thing that Harris really can do uh, is to get under Donald Trump's skin. And that would be one of her biggest, uh, you know, strengths. And uh, indeed, as you could see from that press conference, she has. Well, so much so he wants to do three debates all of a sudden. That's right. Uh, Amy, and he's taking a pretty interesting approach to Kamala Harris's running mate here as well. We're talking about stolen valor this week, some very heady accusations J.D. Vance saying that Tim Walls abandoned his brothers in arms before they were deployed to Iraq when he decided to run for Congress. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. And Kamala Harris did respond to that line of attack briefly yesterday. Here's what she said. Listen, I praise anyone who has presented themselves to serve our country. And I think that we all should. So we seem to be in a world here where the, the Harris Walls campaign wants to try to fly over most of this stuff. Just stay above it. Don't yeah. get in the weeds with Donald Trump. That's Is right. that the most effective strategy or do they need to start knocking these down? Well, yeah, I think the most important thing that we're going to all be looking for in these next 80 whatever many days we have left in the campaign is who does the better job of defining both uh, Harris uh, and Walls, but mostly Harris, because, you know, the vice president, while an important figure is not the principal and voters come out and vote for the presidential candidate, not so much for the vice president. So who defines her and how is she defined? The good news for Harris is right now she is not burdened by what has been, so to speak, um, that she is more popular than Biden uh, right now. Um, she is not getting as much of the blowback and or I guess he's not as much of an anchor, the economy, all of those things, not as much of an anchor around her as it was for Biden. And part of that, too, is she isn't very well defined um, in the minds of voters. They don't know that much about her. And it, this is why you're seeing the Trump campaign spend a great deal of time on paid media, not necessarily with their candidate, uh, the former president, but in paid media, mm -hmm. going after her record on immigration, going after her opinions and views on police reform, um, calling her dangerously liberal for some of these positions. So trying to fill in the, 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 the full picture of Harris. And Harris, of course, is doing the same. She's out with her own ad on immigration saying that when she was yeah, in office right. in California, she was really tough on on border security and cracking down on traffickers. And so uh, this this sprint to define Harris, I think it's going to be critically important. And then the next thing will be, what is this race about? And this is where Trump still has an advantage if the race really does come down to who do you think would do a better job on the economy? Who do you think would do a better job on 
immigration and border security, Trump continues to have mm -hmm. an advantage there. If it's about Donald Trump, as we saw at that press conference, that it looks like, at, and what you were talking about earlier, he goes on the retribution tour in Montana instead of spending time yeah. in a battleground state. He decides mm -hmm. to debate crowd size instead of debating immigration or debating inflation. Um, if that's where this race goes, then that is really good news for Harris. Joe Biden, Amy, is going to be on stage with Kamala Harris next Thursday in Maryland. First time we're going to see this four days before the Democratic National Convention. Who does this help? Well, that's a really good point. Uh, look, I think, as you pointed out, it's four days before the convention. So what Harris is going to do is uh, go straight from there um, into the warm embrace of uh, yeah. her party and her party's delegates. It wasn't looking that way uh, a month ago. The idea of the of, of Chicago being a place of excitement and energy uh, a month ago would be laughable. Now that's exactly what's happening. Um, and look, we'll see a contrast. I think the challenge for Harris um, is finding enough distance from Biden and the unpopular stuff about Biden and also um, reminding folks about the good stuff that uh, they can say the administration is responsible for bringing to the public. The other thing that really stands out when Harris stands next to uh, President Biden is the fact mm -hmm. that she does look and sound and act very differently from him. And this is what's been quite remarkable is that even though she is part of the incumbent party, she is the status quo, so to speak, she's been able to come out um, as a new face, as somebody who's able to flip the page, move on from Biden and Trump. So being yeah. on stage with Biden does remind voters that, oh, yeah, she's still part of this administration, but also reminds mm -hmm. them that she looks very and sounds very, very different from the person who used to be the nominee.